one still in there again. Uh, can't wait to get home. The weirdest thing happened to me when I was coming to work today. Uh, the bike just uh, literally stopped working on the rear cylinder. Uh, I'm not too sure why, but I think it's, it's fuel rela related. We're gonna do some testings, but uh, the f funniest thing is, it does only seem to be on low revs or on idle. As you can, you can hear it. That's just one cylinder, I can literally pull this off. Yeah, and it's nothing and there is spark because I can feel it hitting my uh, hitting my hand that the, the spark but for some reason I only got one cylinder so I'm quickly gonna go home and try to get it sorted because this is crap on my way here actually it was running running fine on two cylinders it just just went crap. It's, it's, it's again now now I started doing on on two again. It's like one and a half now, and it's two now again. It's two cylinder again. <laughs> it's, it's like I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I think it's one again. So it's back to one and then when I rev it up and then the second the rear kicks in as well so I don't know I had a look on the front cylinder which was running fine and as you can see it is perfect the spark plug is bang on beautiful nice light brown as it should be and here is the rear I'm gonna completely fold first I'm gonna have a look on the uh, float level to make sure the amount of fuel in the carburetor is is what it should be but that's that's rich as hell so first I'm gonna check the fuel level and then we go from there I stripped down the carburetor because the fuel level was way too high and it was it was fine before so I stripped it out and I I do remember some people said it on the on the forum that they had uh, no problems and then straight away all of a sudden it's running rich took this plastic tube out and as you can see on the o-rings they are not very good so I think that's caused the problem we'll see so guys it turned out that the problem was the o-rings on the immersion immersion tube so I took this out uh, it was it wasn't easy. I had to heat up the carburetor outside here. That's the thread That's the thread for it. So I had to heat it up gently heat it up a little bit more and then try to get the screw out It's uh, it's not easy whatsoever. So this is the screw and it's 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 soft and it's got thread lock on it. it oh my god. It was so scary to remove it and I didn't want to didn't want to break it so anyway uh, here's the new o-rings, uh, Viton o-rings, uh, 10 mil internal diameter, 1.5 mil cross section, and I bought this uh, Keister uh, needle valve for the carburetors. It was recommended by uh, Seke Aladar from the forum, so we'll see how it works. My old one was a bit worn as well. Uh, I will try to make some macro photos of this to to see the line, and I think. Uh, that's why I started leaking uh, slightly, very slow, uh, small leak, and uh, the fuel level, the fuel level become too high. It was about here, and basically it was just just dripping, dripping petrol into the carburetor, and it was way too rich, as you can see, like on my spark plug. So the front is the front is bang on. That is beautiful, absolutely perfect. That is. So. Uh, what we're gonna do, we're gonna change them too, 
uh, then we have to set up the fuel level um, and obviously I'm gonna change the o-rings over there uh, oh, I also cleaned up uh, the hole in there just with a, a little hammer, hammer cloth uh, cleaned it all up get the old rubber out uh, in both uh, hope you can see it right I'm gonna put some silicone lube on the o-rings before I slide them on there just a little bit That's nice. Let's check the other one. Okay, I'm gonna put a little bit of there. Right, by the way, just a little side note. The jet 127.5 on the front cylinder. When everything is set up right, this is what it produces. So, thumbs up there. So with this exhaust, uh, stock air filter, no KNN stock air box and uh, open exhaust, what I've got there, 127.5 main jet, uh, needle position in the middle position as it should be like a normal setting and it is awesome. So I'm going to put the emulsion tube in, uh, I will never going to pronounce it better, uh, there is a little uh, notch on it which you gotta line up in there this is just a push fit it's nothing there to hold it nothing else there to hold it just gotta line it up there and that's it that one. and then we're gonna put this back in the jet like that and actually while I'm here I'm gonna tighten it up a little bit make sure you use the proper screwdriver for it because you don't want to strip it just gently that's it you can feel it when it starts to turning the tube the emulsion emulsion tube inside that's when you need to stop don't go too crazy with it okay so that goes in there flat one over here so that o-ring when i put the silicone on it should help it slide in I managed to put it in with the 10.5 uh, cross-section o-ring uh, I had to heat up with a heat gun I had to heat up the carburetor to allow that to become a tiny bit bigger just a little bit it didn't need too much and then I pushed this uh, push this part against the vise and then I pushed this down as hard as I could like this I pushed it down as hard as I could and I managed to get it in as you can see hopefully you can see it yeah it's all the way down there's no gap here under the screw no gap here under the screw so that's okay I also put it into the other one without o-ring and it does stick up in the, a little bit in the venturi I think it's called over there so it's not completely flush with the bottom of the carb without even o-ring so it, this one looks exactly the same as the one I did with the o-ring so I'm quite happy with that so that's gonna work that's very good so the o-ring actually the o-ring is all right it's super tight so we're gonna use these uh, stainless steel cap heads uh, which is the head is not bigger than than the original one so that should be okay two and a half mil uh, Allen key that's enough and we're gonna put it there just right there let's do the other one you just want it in a thread like that don't don't go excessive and what I'm gonna do I'm gonna tighten it up using this end of the Allen key the short end and just go quite snug and that's it because it's not gonna not gonna, go, not gonna go anywhere, and the force on it is is, is not a, not a lot anyway. Just gonna go tight, tight, done. Look how nice it looks. That's not gonna bother the uh, membrane whatsoever. It's no no worse than the than the original head. It's uh, it's not bigger. If anything, it's probably a little bit smaller.
it's pretty much exactly the same. Maybe diameter wise a little bit bigger, but that again, it shouldn't shouldn't have any effect uh, whatsoever. I'm in the middle of the process to do the uh, fuel level. I already done that one, uh, and I am using a, a little bench version for the test. Uh, I hope you can. Yeah, I'm just putting the vise on a on a slight angle, like something like this, like it's similar uh, when it's sitting on a bike. Uh, just close enough. It has. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. But what I found is, if you set uh, the the float uh, horizontal to the outside edge, that will give you pretty much uh, close where you want it want to be, which is one and a half, two and a half millimeter above. Sorry, below this this line about one one two mil below currently this uh, this one is is about four so i have to change it a little bit more uh, even though it's already um, uh, even though it's already horizontal i need to make it a little bit even more lower just a tiny bit to give me a little bit more uh, higher uh, fuel level so we're gonna pop the float out It. So I'm going to pop this float out from here and we have to bend that little little tang there I'm just making sure I can show it so I usually take this off so it's not in the way I mean the little needle take that off and I have to bend that a little bit even more up and it's already quite quite up to be honest but let's give it a bit more <sighs> okay I think I think I moved it the <laughs> sad thing is about this that you gotta actually put it all back together and then uh, test it now I'm not gonna put the shaft all the way back just just make it I'm just gonna make it snug that's it that should do it Tilt the carburetor. I'm just making sure you can see what I'm doing. So just tilt the carburetor until until the float is going to push like that. And then give it another like, I don't know, 10 degrees, just like this. And then measure from that in the middle of the ball, in the middle of the, the float. And this should be around 19-ish, 19 millimeters from from this point. It's about 18 and a half. That is something is quite difficult to measure, so it's like a trial and error uh, kind of stuff. What is going on with this? But I'm gonna. I'm gonna put the ball on and I'll show you my little rig how I test it on the bench. So this is my little testing rig. The carburetor is just sitting in there in a very slight angle and uh, we're gonna use this tube to, to check the fuel level. Uh, but what I tend to do is usually pour some in so it's about here, about there and then uh, move this up and down to get the air out because sometimes it, it traps a little air in there so you, you have to make sure there is no air trapped in this tube when you when you pull it up you, you sometimes you can see a little air bubble there you got to make sure you get rid of that before you hit the the actual stop on the on the float so what we're gonna do i'm gonna open this drain bolt out a little bit like one turn and I'm going to start pouring some petrol in while I'm going to lift it up to about this one to about just just like this yeah I'm going to put some petrol in oops I'll show you exactly now because you can see you can see the bubble there yeah so what you got to do is lower it down to get more petrol in the tube and then lift it back up to push any any air out and when you lift it down again there's no air look see there's no air just petrol 
And when you lift it back up, it goes to the level where it is in the right now. Oh, I need four more hands, honestly. And right now is about here. So I'm going to fill it up now, all the way, until no more flowing in, so the petrol stays in this tube somewhere here or here or whatever. So we just make sure it stops, and then we're going to check the level. I just find it's easier to do it on the bench rather than uh, put it on a bike, take it off the bike, put it on a bike. Oh. So I'd rather just do this bench test. Still going in, still going in. So, we have the petrol there, just sitting, not going anywhere. And now we're going to check the level by putting this tube right next to the carburetor over there. It's hard to tell, but I will measure it, but this looks like about one and a half, two millimeters for me, but I'm going to measure it. I just, I just don't have more hands, so I'm going to put you down again. Let's just put it there. This is about two mil. It's about two mil. So I'm happy with that. That's going to stay in there. Now we're going to drain the petrol. So that's about two mil below ceiling surface. So I'm not going to change it because it's if you try to try to achieve like exactly one and a half or or 1.2 mil, it's it's nearly impossible. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to uh, put both carburetors together, uh, assemble them, everything, make ready, and then we're going to fit it back on the bike. So I will be back when it's uh, fully fully assembled. Yes, back to normal. The beast is back. I think the transition between the idle circuit and and the the mid range and to the full is a little bit better. I think I'm only using like one third, maybe maybe one fourth of the throttle, and that this is like half. Jesus. Suspension and brake is not really <laughs> up for the task, what the actual engine can do. Well, that, was, that was a nice pull. It's definitely going stronger than before. 